Hello everyone, before we start today's video, if you could all do me a solid and lightly tap the like button, perhaps share the video about and leave a comment. If you are not subscribed, subscribe as well. It would greatly help this channel. Thank you very much. Just fantastic. Captain's Log, Subdates 221228.8. It's hard to believe that 2022 is almost over. I do have to wonder now, though, if we can think of more creative ways to torture the living feck out of Crewman Bork, or is it Ensign Bork, and the rest of the NPC crew. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another edition of This Week at Twitter, or Twat. Today we shall start with Dave Summer Smith, sorry, Sumner Smith. What does it take for Brexiters to admit they got it badly wrong? Do we just call them Brexiters now? Or is it Brexiteers? Extra E or no extra E? Sargon of a card replied to this with, you are using the wrong metric for success or failure. For Brexiteers, the question was moral and not economic. Should Britain be a sovereign country? The answer is yes at any cost. With Dave Sumner Smith replying, unfortunately, we all now have to pay the price for a flawed philosophy of Brexit. Should this assertion that voting to leave EU as a moral one, taken at any cost, be taken as a recognition that Brexit has caused economic damage to the UK? The answer remains, you are seeing beyond the original point. I voted Brexit because I didn't like that others were in control of this country. And that's a point. We as a sovereign nation dictate what we as a sovereign nation do. If another government overrules this country's government, we are not in control of our own borders, our own laws, our own economy, our own trade. The responsibility is on us to make a better future. If one is unable to see that because they simply think, ah oh, yes, but if we just gave up all that and we're here, we'd be fine, chances are you are not thinking about the bigger picture of how important it is for us to be us. And I always believed that we could economically do better in the long term. It's just a shame really that the current government is, well, what it seems to be a race to the bottom to destroy the economy in the process of protecting private interests that aren't thinking of long-term solutions, but only short-term dividends from, well, shares. It's also a shame that no one's holding China accountable for something that may have involved bats, <clears throat> nothing else, totally nothing else. It's a shame that the economy suffered because of that as well. In fact, the list of things that have been quite unfortunate grows and has grown for quite a number of years, all of which are consequences of other things. But some do attribute these issues to that of Brexit because not enough has been done soon enough. One main issue, and it was a big issue with trade, was that we were going to agree a deal with certain presidents, one more notable being of America. And then he was ejected and replaced by some geriatric who immediately declared himself a proud Irishman, even though he's not, and then said, you're at the back of the queue, basically regurgitating what was said four years earlier by Obama, who objected himself into our politics because he's cool, everyone. Didn't you know? These issues are going to cause hiccups, bumps in the road. But no one is arrogant enough to think that we can continually succeed at everything. There will always be errors, there will always be mistakes, and we learn from them and improve from them. So, what does it take for Brexiters to admit they got it badly wrong? I'm not entirely sure what the answer is, because I don't believe we got it wrong. I do believe we as a country are struggling, but I don't think it's because of Brexit alone. That's not to say it got wrong, merely that we were unable to secure what we needed to secure afterwards because of other factors, which can be argued by some to be a metric of failure and or success. Again, we are free, and that to me is a success. I've always believed with hard work, success will follow, i.e. hard work pays off. My belief is that through perseverance, hard work, dedication, and respect, John Cena style of course, this nation will benefit from us no longer being tied to the European Union. A couple replies underneath that took my interest, the Reverend Calvin Robinson, some of them will never understand this and that is why they lost. In reference to Sargon's reply, that is his response. Paul Davis, it was immoral, because it was in the main supported by bigots, racists and people who wouldn't give the peel off their orange to someone who was starving. With Tony D'Angelo replying, or, check this out, you were told they were those things so that you wouldn't listen to them. Brexit is about sovereignty full stop, that's it, anything additional is unnecessary. Others pointing out that by being a part of the EU, it was just a marketplace everyone, even though they tried to create an army. 
Uh, that's interesting. Uh, overruling a number of issues, in fact, when it came to internet policing in other nations. Uh, yeah, it's it's not that, you colossal thunderfeck. So courtesy of Keemstar, Logan Paul has blocked multiple YouTubers criticizing him for his recent crypto zoo controversy. Underneath an image of Logan Paul blocking somebody. I don't know who though. To be honest, it could actually be Keemstar at this point. Who knows? I did find an article though, and I know a few YouTubers, Carvos more notably, has covered the subject. The article in question that I've linked down below, Logan Paul is impressed as a part-time member of the WWE roster, blah blah blah. Coin Edition has a report that exposed Paul's crypto zoo game as nothing more than a scam. Paul's fun game claimed to enable users to earn money. However, users were left with nothing more than stock images of zoo animals after millions of dollars in investor money. A YouTuber by the name of CoffeeZilla spent the past year investigating Paul for a three-part docu-series. He asked one of the victims, who lost $7,000 under CryptoZoo if the passive yield ever worked for him and if he ever made money? The answer is no. CoffeeZilla investigated the scandal and Logan Paul blamed the developer of the game for its failure, stating that the developer created a code and then ran off with it to Switzerland and wouldn't return it unless the YouTuber paid him $1 million. CoffeeZilla shared that due to Logan Paul's influence, people spent millions. On the first day, people bought $2.5 million worth of eggs, and the game wasn't even launched at the time. CoffeeZilla then called Logan Paul's manager who replied to the crypto investigators with a no-comment response, which in turn does not do him any favours. For the sake of what is going on, I'm going to link CoffeeZilla's videos and Carvos's down below. It does look like a scam, I'm not going to lie, it really does. I don't do crypto for a few reasons. One, I don't want to be like Boogie2988. Two, I like actually having cash in my hand. And three, I don't understand cryptocurrency in the slightest. So I always advise people if they're going to invest their money, please do not invest in cryptocurrency. That's not some kind of economic genius advice. It's just I cannot back something I don't understand, okay? That said, I will never tell you what to do in the first place. When it comes to making informed decisions, the onus is on you after all, not me. I will present the information I have to hand, what I have found, and I will tell you what I think. In this instance, it looks like a scam, and annoyingly for Logan Paul, his name is associated with it. Blocking people as a response for being called out for it is not a good look. I get you're going to get called out, you're going to get negativity, but you, Logan Paul, have been getting negativity for years and you have been rebuilding your reputation. It was in the mud for a long time. You rebuilt it, be the bigger man, take the licks, take the lumps, and when everything is there and available to present it, if you want to present it to clear your name as it were, by all means do so. You don't have to, but for your reputation's sake, it would look better on you if you weren't blocking people criticizing you. There are going to be reactive and reactionary people on any given subject. You know this. You're on the internet. You've made a career on the internet. I saw how much flack you got for making a table out of Game Boys, which I thought was absolutely gorgeous. I've got like three. Can I have like a, can I have a bedside table with that? A Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance? Can, can I have that? Can you make that for me, please? Please? Anyway, moving on. Boobs. Testing. One, two, three, dot, dot, dot. Tweeted by Among the Wildflowers. Reply from Herschel Bates. I cannot stand that word. It's so degrading to women, brackets in my opinion, close brackets, full stop. Ratioed, by the way. <laughs> But there are some replies underneath that tickled me a little bit, so let's get to that. And I'm going to preface this before we get into them by saying, attacking people based on their appearance. I get the indication that perhaps a white knight, perhaps someone thinking that if they are seen doing this publicly, others might let them fondle their boobs, as opposed to the ones they usually fondle, which is their own. But for the sake of it, let's let's be better than that. Just, just for this one bit, all right? Words like moist and damper must drive him running from the room. Herschel down thumb. Chris, how about swinging meats? Tits, knockers, meat hooks, any of those bug you? Herschel, strangely enough, no. Interesting. Space snossage. I think boobs are the last thing you should be worrying about. Included is Herschel Bates's profile picture, with Herschel replying, your point? P.S. I've had this hairline for 20 plus years. All are gone today. What do you prefer to call them? Tiddies, major maracas, sweater puppies, chest pillows, jugs, hooters, melons, knockers, for the record, breasts. Zippy zipper, my favorite one of all. Boobs, 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 moist. Herschel, it's not so much that I'm intolerant of the term. 
I just prefer one over the other. The bigger one or the smaller one? The one that's wonky, the one that's straight? Is the placement of one's nipple by an any chance an indicator of which one you prefer? I'm afraid for you, Herschel Bates, you're going to have to be incredibly specific because we on the internet are very, very judgy. Especially if you are English. We love boobs. And I'm going to follow us up with a tweet from Requiem for a brick. Me at 14 seeing boobs. Me at 27 seeing boobs. It's never going to change, okay? Especially for the English. All right. Sorry, Herschel. You're on your own there. Sometimes it's nice to be reminded that there are, in fact, alternative platforms that one can spread their message if they wish to. Some auto do this. Rumble, BitChute. Rumble are exceedingly fast. BitChute, reasonably fast. Yes. My content, by the way, is on both. Link in the link tree in the description. Some, though, I'm surprised are still around, losing all discernible support which can mostly be attributed to McJugger Nuggets himself, the creator, I believe, of Storyfire. If he wasn't such a flip-flop and was a bit more consistent, this would not have been a problem. Anthony Sharp, a fellow creator, had tweeted, Since Storyfire app has decided that turning extremely political is a good idea, I can no longer follow or support this platform. Storyfire's Twitter has gotten a bit political, I will admit. But the shock for me was the fact that anyone still used Storyfire. So I wholeheartedly agree with Bo Blacks, who says Storyfire just lost its last user because I didn't think anyone was actually uploading to it anymore. Hell, McJugger Nuggets hasn't posted on there in over two months. I remember I had at one point considered setting up an account and then it had in its terms of service that I had to create exclusive content for their platform. With what I do on this channel, what I do on Electric Boogaloo, I don't have the time to do that as well. I really don't. Not if I want to maintain a consistent standard. Also, I kind of want to grow Electric Boogaloo. I don't want to grow a Storyfire account. The goal for reward is unattainable, and I don't care for cryptocurrency, as earlier stated. The final tweet I'd like to look at today comes from Miss Calico. What is the point of sending replies to someone if you're just going to block before they get the chance to read them? Does it stroke one's ego? Let you have the last word? I really don't get it. For me, the answer is the last word. They think by doing that, they've done what is comparable to that of a mic drop. It's not what it is at all, it's arrogance. Additionally, it could be exhaustion, because everyone on the internet is big brave, so when they start arguing, they just keep going backwards and forwards, invariably hyper-focusing on a tiny, minute detail no one cares about, and losing their way from the original point that started the disagreement in the first place. Director Arkita replied, pretty sure that it's a desperate attempt to create the illusion their last words were so biting and pithy you had nothing to reply with. From the perspective of people that follow them, they intend to deceive. He is also correct, although he spelt deceive incorrectly. I also think it's a petty dick move from a coward. If you want to act big brave on the internet, you have to front up. Doing it, then blocking someone is not big brave, it is big coward. Bitch made, in fact, is the more accurate descriptor for somebody who does it. It is why on my Twitter account there's only one person blocked, because I can't be asked. They deserve it, no one else does. Also, if anyone gets aggressive with me, what's the point? I don't check my notifications anymore because Twitter's malfunctioning and not showing me my replies anymore anyway. Half the time it tells me none of my tweets have had replies to. I click on the tweet, it's got a dozen replies. What's this bollocks?